Hey, everybody in here. Good morning. Look at that. I got my coffee going in my beautiful wood-burning stove. I got a little window cracked. Yeah. There it is. It's coffee time. I got my coffee made. I'm going to put a little bit more water in there because I may have two cups of coffee today. It's mocha java this time. It's delicious. Got some cocoa in there. Some, well, some baking cocoa. And some milk. And, well, actually, just some powdered milk. And some Splenda. It's delicious. It is so relaxing having this fire. And, yep, it's not sparking or anything. If it did, if it started popping, if I got a piece of wood in there that's likely to pop, I'd close that door. But having the window slightly cracked, it just makes the draw so much better. Elaine, I think it was, had left a comment about that, and she's absolutely right. It works so much better if you've got a window cracked slightly. Now, they, that may seem counterintuitive because, well, you're trying to keep it warm in here, but believe me, it's very warm in here. Nice and toasty. Last night, I made some split pea with ham soup, and it was delicious. And I wanted to point out, too, see those, uh, those feet on the bottom? Someone had mentioned getting some concrete or some rocks or something and putting it underneath of there to retain the heat. Well, heat rises and, oops, sorry. Um, heat rises and, I mean, we all know that. I can touch those legs, and they're cold they it's not hot underneath the firebox really at all the heat just kinda goes up um, it doesn't go up too much I mean it goes up to just right there I am gonna do something different with that curtain even though it doesn't get hot where the curtain is um, it's still better to be safe than sorry so I'll do something else with that curtain even though it doesn't it's not hot up there it's warm but it's not hot so the legs stay cool, so underneath the firebox, it doesn't get hot down there. And I have ran my hands all the way up and down that metal, and it gets warm. Um, it gets, it's warm right behind the firebox, of course. As it goes up, it's pretty cool. I put my hand behind the metal, and the welder's blanket is completely cool. There's no heat on that at all. So this is working absolutely fantastic. Um, I don't smell an overt smell of smoke in here. Um, it just smells like a fire, you know, like you got a nice, warm, toasty fireplace going. And I got my fire bricks in there. Uh, they don't come all the way out to the front. I had to break a couple to put them in the sides. Um, so that I could have some on the sides towards the back of the firebox. When I build my fire, someone had mentioned about making a V. That's how I do it. Yep. Make a V um, with a pointy part 20 pointing towards the back of the firebox. And then I put uh, some kindling underneath of that and kind of, you know, lay sticks crosswise um, and just layer it that way. And light it on fire, and I just add wood as I need it. And uh, I build the fire towards, more towards the back. I'm not bringing it all the way up front, just because I don't want a bunch of stuff sparking out onto the floor. Yeah, that floor is messy down there, uh, mainly because I've just been kind of sloppy with how I've been, you know, handling the wood and whatnot. But it is working really great. I'm just relaxed. I'm happy. Yeah, off to the left there is my little blower stick. I haven't had to use it because this just draws in air so well and smoke is not escaping anywhere where it shouldn't be and it's just absolutely wonderful. Now, I did want to point out, I would never walk away from this firebox the way that it is with it open like this. When this fire is burning, I'm inside the tiny house normally if I have to step out, I will close that door completely. Um, 
just because, you know, you don't want to turn your back on a fire. Learned that a long time ago. But this is wonderful. It's just working out absolutely perfectly. So now it's on to finishing the walls. That'll get done eventually. Stop asking me when I'm going to get it done. It'll get done when I have the money to finish it. First, I just have to get the rest of the insulation that I have, make sure it's still in good condition, and put that up. And then as money and time permits, I will finish the rest. It's going to look so nice in here. It's going to be very, very rustic, very plain. It's not going to be fancy. And, um, you know, you everyone has their idea of how they should do things. Well, not every single application in every single dwelling in every single area is going to be the same. You've got diff different weather. You've got different humidity. You've got all kinds of different factors. So what may work for you may not work for somebody else. So before you start insisting that somebody's doing it wrong, think about the other factors that uh, don't apply to certain people. There are certain basic premises to keep yourself safe with a fire. Yes, there are. But um, I've never warmed up to people who say you have to do it this way. You have to do it that way. What I'm going to tell you is you do it the way that works the best for you and stay safe. The biggest advice I can give anybody who has one of these stoves is never turn your back on your fire. If you need to leave, you need to close that firebox. Maybe even completely shut the fire down. You have to have a fire extinguisher and water. Close by, I do. Have both of those. And just don't be stupid, you know. Don't be stupid. And one thing, too, I do not let the fire burn rip-roaring all day. I mean, all day and all night. In other words... By the time I go to sleep, this tiny house has gotten nice and warm and toasty. Close the firebox. I even close the dampers. And then I go to sleep. So the fire is almost out by the time I go to sleep. It retains a lot of the warmth so far with the insulation I've gotten up so far. So that's great. Uh, but it does get cold by morning time. And uh, I just start another fire. So... That's kind of the way it works with me. You know, this off-grid living, sure, you could get up in the middle of the night and keep adding wood, but I'm a tough old broad. It's got to get down to, like, the teens for me to start freaking out about the cold. And it's been pretty good. Last night it got down to, I think, 36, and I didn't even notice it. I was all bundled up in my... Oh, <laughs> I gotta, I got to move that water. It's uh, hot enough already. But I stay bundled up in the covers. Got my Judy girl next to me. And it stays warm for hours, at least until I can get to sleep. And when I, get, when I go to sleep, I get really, really hot. So, it's working great. A lot of you said that I couldn't do it. A lot of you said I'm doing it the wrong way. I'm going to catch my house on fire. Well, you know what? You clearly have not built one of these stoves inside a cabin because I did it. I did it my way. And I did it the same way that a lot of other people do it too. And it's working great. No fire. But I'm not stupid. I don't, I don't, uh, I'm very careful about what I do. So anyhow, this is just going to be the video for today. It's all about my pretty little wood-burning stove, and it's just going to get better and better. One thing I would like to do, and I've seen somebody else do this with one of these exact same stoves, is they got a pan, basically a large hot water heater pan, and put the stove right on top of that. I really think I'd like to do that, even though this welder's blanket is sufficient. I think it'll help, you know, the ash and whatnot from 
you know, the little poker there. I lay it down and that has ash on it and whatnot. So I may get, I may look into getting one of those. But it's working, guys. And I'm very, very proud of what Cody and Hannah and I did. We did a great job. Just a few more adjustments and it's going to be great. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. See you in the next video. For watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.